Hello, my name's Tom and I'm back talking about F1 Fantasy ahead of the 2023 season. In the next five minutes, I'm going to be going through five of my bits of advice, tips, however you want to call it, um, ahead of the 2023 season in order to improve you as an F1 Fantasy manager. So whether you're new to the game, brand new, or maybe you've been playing for a couple of years, who knows, then these tips will hopefully benefit you. So let's get straight into it with tip number one. So tip number one is paying close attention to the price changes, particularly at the beginning of the season. And you might be thinking, well, though, it's kind of obvious, Tom, but actually, actually, I think it's very important this season because of what happened last season. In 2022, the price changes were a mess. If you played last season, you know there was Hackerman and then eventually PlayOn, who make the game, eventually came in and manually adjusted all the prices and they didn't communicate anything that was horrendous. So you need to be on the ball because the truth is no one knows what's going to happen with the price changes. At the moment until the game is released and the prices start fluctuating you can check the sentiment tracker use external websites like f1 fancy tracker etc um we we don't know so you have to be paying close attention you can't rely on other people you need to be looking at, as soon as the deadline hits in bahrain you need to be paying attention to what's going on with the prices because you don't want to be priced out at the very beginning of the season you want to be able to build that budget as the season goes on you don't want to be left at the start line and coming in at tip number two is listen to me well, actually, listen to the experts. And what I mean by the experts is obviously the drivers. Listen to the drivers. Listen to the interviews. They give up so much information about which car is suited to which track and what they think their their possibility of winning the races that give them a given week. Like, listen to them. They have such important information. Use your own knowledge and build upon what the experts are telling you. Other experts you can listen to are the team principals. Very good information comes from them. The journalists are pretty good at giving you lots of information. You don't have to be an engineer or a mechanic to understand what the best picks are in F1 Fantasy, but listen to the experts and, you know, listen to the commentators, particularly the ex-drivers, uh, people like Jensen Button, the very, very insightful stuff that you can pay attention to and use all that kind of information, bring it all together and use that to influence your F1 Fantasy picks. And coming in at number three is race car performance. And what I mean by this is kind of qualifying performance versus race car performance because if you've got a car that qualifies well um, but it doesn't do so, so well in the races you're going to lose fantasy points that's how the fantasy point structure works if you qualify at a certain point and you drop drop down you lose fantasy points and conversely if you qualify poorly but you gain positions you're going to gain f1 fantasy points so you kind of look at which cars qualify well, which cars don't qualify well, and compare each car's qualifying performance to its race performance. And those are kind of are better than their qualifying, are good picks. And obviously the reverse of that, if you qualify well but don't race well, not necessarily such a great pick. It doesn't always work like that, but it's definitely a factor which I think is important. And then you've got the likes of Red Bull from last year that were clearly qualifying well and racing well. If you can get a combination like that where you can get those stable F1 fantasy points, then that's even better. Number four is using the Mega Driver. Now, the Mega Driver is one of the chips that you get in F1 Fantasy. And how many people come in and blow their Mega Driver chip all over Bahrain the first race of the season? It's not optimal, in my opinion. There's going to be six sprint races in 2023. So there's a, a high likelihood that at some point we're going to see sprint races align with streaks. So qualifying streaks and race streaks. If we can get some sort of combination of sprint race and streaks together then we're going to get big, big points and we can really maximise the Mega Driver usage. So don't blow it in Bahrain. Be a bit more patient and wait for the combination of streaks and sprint races. Hopefully, I think that's the best use of the Mega Driver. And therefore, more F1 fantasy points because that's what we're here for. And coming in at the fifth and final tip for this particular video is the teammate battle. Now, obviously, there are 20 drivers on the grid for 2023 and each of them has a teammate. So let's try and pick the drivers that are going to beat their teammate. You get points for beating your teammate in qualifying, you get points for beating your teammate in the race, you get points for having a cooler helmet than your teammate. Well, actually, the last one's not true, but you do get F1 fantasy points for beating your teammate in quali and the race. And I'll take, as an example, Lando Norris got 88 points for outscoring Ricardo last season. He dominated Ricardo. 88 points is quite a big chunk of his total points of the season. So while it's not crucial... I don't think it should be the crucial point in picking picking drivers. I don't think there is actually probably any one particular crucial point in picking drivers. But I do think that the teammate battle is certainly something if you know if you're really tight on, or oh, do I pick this driver or this driver, and this driver is consistently beating their teammate more often, then that could be the point that edges you towards picking that person in your team. So I do think the teammate battle is important, and that's my final tip for this video. Thank you very much for watching. These have been my five tips in five minutes and I've just about made the time limit. Please give this video a like, please subscribe. And if you like this sort of video, you know, let me know and I can make more. Thanks very much and bye.